Hey, hey, this week's episode of the Amazon Files brought to you by Mommy Income. I am your host, Kristen Ostrander. And if you have built or have been building your Amazon business or brand, you have to hear this episode. See, even though you might be in a growth phase, a startup phase, even building your business, and having an exit strategy is always super important. So I will be honest with you, when I first started selling on Amazon, I was just trying to make a few bucks online. I didn't think about building a business. I didn't think I was building an asset. I never even thought uh, uh, an Amazon store was sellable to begin with. And back in the day, it actually wasn't. Um, when Amazon first started uh, with Amazon stores, there was like these strict policies about people not being able to sell or transfer their store. Well, they have since changed that in mind, but like you have to start thinking about things like how long do you plan on staying in business? Are you growing this to a certain point? Eventually, do you want to retire? Do you want to sell it as part of another business that you have? Pass it on as a legacy business? to family members, transfer, uh, partner with someone, any of these types of things that you want to think about. Because honestly, when we're just building, we're thinking about what products we're selling and making profit and doing our books and doing our taxes and not necessarily thinking about how we're going to sell our Amazon business in the end, what our exit strategy is. And so um, we are talking to an expert today who is going to help us sort out some of these inform this information and be able to help you prepare for the future no matter if that's five years from now or 20 years from now, having a plan for what you're going to do with your business and how to set yourself up for success so that you build a business that's a strong, sellable asset. Because let's be real, this is hard stuff. Building a business is hard things. It's not just, oh, I think I'll build a business today. No, it takes sometimes decades, sometimes years and years to be able to build a profitable business. And then what? There's got to be a then what? So today we're talking all about um, how you set up your business for an exit strategy, for a strategy that will really help uh, other people to understand, uh, help yourself understand what you need to do with your business when you are decide you wanna walk away or sell or you're just done or burned out or you found another endeavor or whatever it is. So uh, we're gonna tune in today, but first I want to remind you, this is one of the last weeks you can sign up. There's a few spots left for the workshop, mommyincome.com slash workshop. There's a few seats left. I can't wait to meet all of you in person. I'm getting more and more excited. Yes, Vegas is hot in the summer, but but it's also summer still. And we get to go through the trade show and we get to do all of these amazing things together. So please sign up mommyincome.com slash workshop. We are going to build bundles together. You're gonna to walk away with new ideas, trade show catalogs, uh, vendor information, every single thing you need to do to build bundles together. Get your questions answered in real time. Connect with other Amazon sellers, mommyincome.com slash workshop. I think we have like two spots left um, as of today. So please make sure you sign up early because this, this might be the last one for 2021. Calendar is filling up really fast. And so I'd love to be able to see you there. All right, so let's get to our guest. So today we have our wonderful guest expert, Thomas Smale with us. Uh, he is the CEO and owner and founder of um, FE International, and they do all kinds of, of business strategy, their acquisitions, helping people buy and sell, but mostly creating successful exits for people who have e-commerce businesses, all kinds of different businesses. So welcome, Thomas, to the show. Thank you so much for being here. Yeah, thanks for inviting me on, Kristen. Really appreciate it. Sure. Okay. So I wasn't going to give your bio justice. I want you to, to just introduce yourself and tell people who you are and what you do. Sure. So um, FE International was founded in 2010, um, which is 11 years ago now. So sounds like a very long time, particularly in, in this industry, like Amazon businesses, e-commerce businesses 11 years ago were nowhere near as mainstream as they are now. It's been a real lot of growth over the last five years or so. Um, in that time, we've grown to a team of nearly a hundred people. Uh, we're not quite there yet, but we probably will be by the end of the year. Um, I'm personally based in San Francisco. Uh, we also have a small office in Miami. Our head office is in New York. Um, we have a team in, in London as well. Um, as you mentioned, we primarily work with people who want to sell their business and we will help them prepare the business for a sale, increase the value, and then ultimately what we get paid for is physically selling the business. And we work with businesses anywhere from 
$50,000 valuation. So you might just be starting out making a few sales all the way to the largest we're working with at the moment is $150 million. So significantly larger, but we work with all sorts of businesses as long as it's e-commerce, Amazon, software, content-based or content online. It's like a, a blog, like a, think a recipe blog, something like that. Um, we work with those kind of businesses. Um, and our client ultimately is the, the owner of that business, but we also work with and build relationships with buyers and investors who want to acquire these businesses in the first place, because obviously if we want to get you the best possible deal as a seller, we need to have access to a, a large network of potential acquirers. Awesome. That's so great. So um, let's get a little bit more about you. Obviously, you're interested in e-commerce and, and technology and, and Amazon and things like that. So it says you're a serial entrepreneur. So what was your first uh, entrepreneurial endeavor? Like what what made you decide that you wanted to do something that was all your own? Yeah, so I think for me, I was this is going back to when I was at college. And I think like most college kids, well, most entrepreneurs, I didn't have any money. So it was kind of you either have to get a job or you have to make some money yourself. I think now people would call it like a side hustle or something like that. Absolutely. Back then it was just back then it was just a job or finding a way to make make some money. So I used to spend all my summers like working. I'd be working in a bar, working in a kitchen, washing pots and pans, um, getting paid about six bucks an hour, which um in hindsight really wasn't that much. But when you're starting out, you don't really have you just have to work. Um so I was using the cash I was making from that to buy domains. Um, so I'm, we're talking, and I'd be buying a domain for like $50 and then maybe putting a website on it or doing various things. And then maybe at the end of the month, I'd sell it for $200. Um, and I was usually using my credit card. And I think at the time, my limit was about a thousand a month. So I tried max the credit card buying stuff. And then by the end of the month, sell it all to pay back um my credit card so that's how i started out this is probably 14 15 years ago now when i was like i said just starting college like early through college um after a couple of years of doing that i think i realized that this was around the time there was a, a big recession going back 11 12 years ago um so i did a business degree as a college studying business most of my peers were going to go work at investment banks or big four consulting firms or whatever. Um, I realized that's not what I really wanted to do. And given the job market at the time was pretty terrible, I figured why not start my own thing and see how well it would work. Um, so I'd done quite well. I guess you call it flipping domain, flipping websites. That's what we'd call it at the time. A reseller just like us, only you're reselling it, digital it, exactly. websites. I was just selling something, just selling something different, but I could well have been selling anything i mean the concepts are all exactly the same right um, right and then at the time companies like effie international didn't exist there were some smaller companies out there were some marketplaces if you had an online business and you wanted to sell it you couldn't really go anywhere so people started come to me and they're like hey thomas you, you're like you've sold about i don't know 50 domains you clearly know what you're doing i have a website can you help me sell it and at the time i hadn't got a clue that so now we now we're a mergers and acquisitions firms. So that's the technical term. If you have a hundred million dollar business, you're looking for a mergers and acquisitions firm, even though effectively all we're doing is helping you sell your business. So it has a fancy technical term, but it's what we're actually doing is relatively simple conceptually. It's just helping you sell. So people would come to me. I had no idea what mergers and acquisitions was. I just thought I was helping people sell. So I think the first ever deal I helped someone with was about $20,000 business. Um, I can't remember what they paid me. I think I just got them to pay me like 500 bucks once the sale completed. And at the time, that was a huge amount of money. That was about a month of rent from memory. Um, so I was like, well, I can pay my rent. I don't have to outlay any money. It was just my time. Um, and then from there, it really compounded. It was just word of mouth. <laughs> Did you really enjoy it? Because that I think is part of the entrepreneurial thing is that you kind of just say, hey, you know, I can do this. I've sold some domains. I'm sure I can sell somebody's business. And then once you were successful with selling this person's business, it's kind of like you got bit by the bug of like, hey, I can do this more and bigger and better. So that's really, well, uh, really cool to hear. Yeah, exactly that, because it was like it was 20,000 and then they would refer a friend who had a $50,000 business. 
And I think when I realized it really would be a thing is where I did my first six figure deal, which was $300,000. And I got paid $30,000, which at the time effectively paid for about a year of living expenses. It was rent, small office, um, hiring first two employees um, who were offshore remote. Um, and that was it. And then that was a good, good foundation. And that's when I really realized it would be a thing. And that, that there was March, 2011. So just over 10 years ago now. Wow. Well, that, that's super awesome to hear. And just knowing that, you know, just, it, it takes a while. I keep telling people all the time. It's like, everyone wants this quick fix, but really when you're first starting something, you have no idea what you're doing and you just keep doing it and keep improving upon it until you can turn it into something. And I think a lot of the listeners are doing that with their Amazon stores. You're just starting out. You're starting to see if even this is for you, but it's really important to start with the end in mind as well, whether it's a short-term exit, a long-term business you're trying to build. So uh, why do you think it's important to have some of these fundamentals of thinking about selling or merging or um, things like that, even in the beginning of your growth and startup phase? Why do you think it's important? So I think, firstly, it's somewhat motivational. When you're starting out, if you don't know what you're trying to achieve, then why are you doing it? I think a lot of people have said, like, why do you have a job? You have a job because you either need to pay your rent, you, you want to save to buy a house, you then want to pay your mortgage, uh, maybe you want to go on vacation, maybe you want to get married, maybe you, I know you want to, if you're like me, you rescue four cats and you have four cats running around your house. All, all sorts of things have been, so anyone with a, a job has a goal. It's like, well, I have to pay these, pay these things. If you're starting a business, often, and to your point, it does take a long time, the cash flow you physically get paid from your business does take time to build up until it's substantial enough, usually to replace a full-time income or substantially more. Very few people become like physical cash in their bank account millionaires within two years of starting to sell. But that does not mean you do not have a business worth millions within a couple of years, which a lot of people don't really think about. They're like, well, my business is making me, I don't know, a million dollars a year in sales and I'm making $250,000 in profit. And you might be taking all of that home, which obviously in most places in the world, most places in the US, $250,000 is a lot of money every year to be making and you can be very comfortable. But that business could be worth just um, back of a napkin math, one to $1.5 million. Um, so if you think of it like that, you're making 250000 a year but you also have an asset worth seven figures. If you think about that from the start, then you're always thinking about what you can potentially do with that sort of money. Again, in most places, I mean, I live in San Francisco, so maybe an exception. Most places in the US, $1.5 million after tax, and you'd only be paying capital gains tax. So it's a relatively low rate. You can buy a house. You don't ever need a mortgage. Um, you probably can't necessarily retire, but it's a very good start to financial independence. So that's why I think it's so important because a lot of people don't realize what you're building, what everyone listening is working on at the moment can eventually be sold. And if you realize that and you realize you're building asset value, then it's not just, it's not just the value of the cash flow. because if you get a job and you get paid that same $250,000 a year, you can't sell your job. It has no value. Um, maybe right. you get a stock option. That's a bit facetious. Maybe you get stock options. Um, maybe you could leverage that to go get a better job. But ultimately, you're not building anything with value. You're building someone else's business. And if you get stock options, that's like a bonus. Um, but you might not get that. Um, so that's definitely the way to go into it looking. It's not just the cash flow you're making. It's the, the asset value you're building as well. I think that is so that that's so great for everyone to understand because I have had to learn this over time. At the beginning, like you said, side hustle. I was just trying to make a few extra dollars, pay some bills. I had kids at home, you know, stay at home mom. And as I started to grow, I didn't even think about it then. I was, you know, making decent money, maybe what I would have made if I just got, you know, a regular nine to five gig kind of thing going on. And it wasn't until several years in that I realized that. As I was making some changes into my business, uh, looking at long-term sustainability and eventually 
wow, this someone might actually want to buy this. These brands that I'm building or the store that I'm building and the customer base and the, the trademarks and everything else that I've kind of worked up towards that, that I love what you said about the fact that like if you make $250,000 a year at your nine to five job or wherever you work, that's great. You make great money. But at the end of the day, you retire and you leave with your 401k if you've built that or whatever it is, but you don't sell the business and make any money. You've made somebody else millions of dollars in your service to them. And so what I love about building a business is that at the end, whenever that is, sometimes people just get burned out. They've built a very successful business and they're just like, I'm tired of e-commerce. I want to do something else with my life. I can sell this business and invest that into my next endeavor, or I could retire or I could pay off my mortgage or whatever it is. So uh, I love the fact that you mentioned different price points because some people think, you know, some people start this Amazon business and they decide to just close up their store because they got tired of it. They sell all their inventory or they donate it and they just close their store. And what they don't realize is even if their business is only making $50,000 a year, it's still a sellable asset as long as you have all your duckies in a row. So let's talk about that for a minute. Uh, what are a couple of like key things that people need to start doing in their business now to make sure, or at least set yourself up for a successful exit in the end? Is there financials or certain things that people should be very aware of as they're moving forward that um, business acquisitions or people that are purchasing their businesses are looking for? Yeah, so at a very base level, like do not stop selling. If you wanna sell your business, it has to still be operational. So where people make the mistake, let's say they want to get out of the business, which is all of our clients want to get out of their business. They're like, I'm bored of it. I'm moving on to something else. I have a better investment, I have an opportunity to buy a house. I want to go to college. I want to propose to my girlfriend, boyfriend, whatever it might be. Lots of different things they might want to do. But the biggest mistake people make at a really fundamental level, they just stop selling. And they, like you say, they go try sell all their stock on eBay. They just give it away or whatever. But buyers only want to buy a business that's consistently making money. So at the very least, make sure your business is consistently making money and is operational. We will not be able to sell it regardless of the situation. You're effectively just going to be liquidating the inventory. No one's going to pay you any sort of premium. Um, the second most important thing, particularly if you're early stage, is much, much easier on day one or in the early days to do this than it is to fix it five, 10 years in. And that's tracking your financials properly. So many people we work with, particularly in the e-commerce and Amazon space, their financials are a complete mess, to be honest. Um, they're really messy. They don't necessarily know what's coming in. They don't necessarily know what's going out. Um, they don't necessarily keep track of stock very well. Um, so whether you want to do your accounts yourself or hire a bookkeeper or an accountant or whatever, there's not necessarily a right or wrong way. Um, I do think it's important to, do some of it yourself, just so you at least have an understanding. Quite a lot of people we work with, but if you just trust their bookkeeper to do everything, they're like, oh yeah, I just send my numbers to the bookkeeper. They send them back. It looks good. Like I take my money out of the company. I'm happy. Um, but as a business owner, you really like you need to realize, particularly over time as you scale, you, you're responsible for that PL. So hire someone if you want, but you have to know your numbers. Um when build things sellable, also we need a brand which is it doesn't necessarily need to be unique, but it needs to have some protection and value. So that could be trademark, that could be copyrights over images or whatever. Um, if you're even if you're selling a generic product, at least package it in such a way which does not seem generic. But like anyone can go on Alibaba and order a hundred thousand of anything and then resell it literally as is. That's not really building a business. So either put your own packaging on it, put your own name on it, your own label, whatever it might be. It's not really a right or wrong way to do it. And you're more of the expert about this than I am, but build a brand. And like you say, it doesn't have to be unique, but at least make it seem unique. But the vast majority of products out there on the shelves are not unique in the first place. So you just need to have a, a, a unique brand. Um, so buyers always are looking for something like that. And it doesn't need to be anything um, particularly fancy. It just needs to physically be a um, like a brand people want to buy. Um, and then from there, for something to be popular and actually grow into saying that someone wants to buy, the business needs to be continuously growing. 
So at a bare minimum, it needs to be making money consistently, but really buyers want to buy something that's that's growing, consistently going upwards. What would be like a safe like growth rate? So if they're looking for growth, like any percentage is acceptable or is it there a certain like level where they look at this is not necessarily uh, growth or, you know, things like that, like over time? Um, is it 5%, 10% year over year? Is it lower than that? Or is it just any sort of growth is acceptable? Uh, let's let's get to the nitty gritty of that. I would say any level of growth is acceptable. Um, there's not really a right or wrong amount for it. Like how much is, I would say good growth would be anything over like a couple of percent per month. Um, a lot of it does depend on the size of the business. Um, if you're making eight figures a year, then it's probably unrealistic that you'll grow at 200% per year. If you're making $50,000 a year, then getting to maybe 200,000 a year after, I'm not saying it's easy, but it's, it's much easier than going from 5 million to 20 million. So some of it does depend a little bit on size, um, but there's not necessarily a, a right or wrong growth rate. I'd say any sort of growth, as long as the line is going upwards, if you're looking at your like revenue chart, um, that's absolutely fine. I guess buyers just want to see something that you can at least project out is going to continue to grow and be worth more in the future. Because ultimately they're paying you based on what well, the business has made in the past, but anyone buying a business wants to make their money back. So you want to see that it's going to grow and whatever you might have been working on uh, within the business, whether that's growth opportunities that might not kick in for two or three years, people want to buy a business that's been run as a business. No one wants to buy a business where they feel like it's been custom built to be sold in, in two years. It has to at least feel like it's been created with the, the long-term in mind. Um, like, like is a, normal length of time before someone can consider selling their business so say you've been in business how many years before you decide that it, you have a good exit plan does it have to be a certain number of years or um, like what does that look like um so firstly there's not necessarily a hard and fast rule i'd say and my answer there differs if you want to hire us you want to work with an m a firm or somebody who's going to help you sell your business we generally look for at least two years of history in the e-commerce or amazon space um, you can go try sell yourself after six weeks. I mean, it doesn't mean you'll be able to sell it, but it, it is hypothetically possible. But I say, generally speaking, two years is about right. Like you say, it does take some time to ramp up and build a business. You're not suddenly going to make a million dollars a month in your first month. I mean, yes, it does occasionally happen, but it's very, very unlikely. Um, so it does take a little bit of time to ramp. Um, I'd say two years is a good time to start thinking about it. In your if in your very first year you're spending any amount of time figuring out like how you're going to sell your business, you're probably not really doing it right. You should be spending your time figuring out how to grow the business and making more money because ultimately that's going to be what makes it worth more. Not do you have a like exit plan typed out or a presentation for exit plan that you've made after six months. So it's important to understand at least the concepts that make a business sellable, but you shouldn't waste any time like talking to people like me in year one, which is for, spend all your time listening to people like you, how to make more money, how to build a better brand. Um, and then you can speak to me once it's older, growing, and we're actually starting to figure out what, what your plan is. Do you want to sell for a million dollars, 10 million, 100 million? Again, there's no right or wrong answer, but it's helpful to know. Here's another question. Is there, are the business buyers are looking for a certain percentage of profit per company or is that less relevant than than revenue growth because anyone can have revenue growth but like what kind of profit are you making I mean, if i spend more on ads i'll probably have more revenue but i'm going to make less profit so what's the balancing act between revenue growth versus actual uh, profit in the business yeah that is a really good question actually um so say generally revenue growth is important but that usually has to be correlated to profit so if your revenue grows by 20%, you'd want your profit to grow by 20% as well. Um, but that, that said, as you grow, it might get harder. Your margins might get worse. Your margins might also get better. So there's not really a right or wrong answer to what your margins should be. I'd say generally speaking, we see businesses once they get much bigger. So in the e-commerce space, once you maybe get to 100 million in revenue, then net margins might be actually 
quite a lot lower. They might be running at a 5% net margin. Whereas if you're starting out and you have a business and you do, and I say $450,000 in sales, it's not uncommon to see people making $200,000 profit because you don't really have any of the real cost of running a business yet. You don't have an office, you don't have a warehouse, you don't have any, probably don't have any employees. Um, you don't have to hire HR people. There's a huge amount of costs you just don't have. Um, and if you're selling like wholesale and things like that to get to that 100 million revenue, your gross margin is probably going to be a lot lower as well. Because if you sell $10 million worth of product to Costco, they're not paying you the same. You're not going to make a huge margin selling to Costco. Whereas per unit on Amazon or on your own Shopify store or whatever it might be, you can make a significantly higher um, profit margin per unit. So it's not necessarily a right or wrong answer, but you are right. You can't necessarily increase revenue and just lose money because you're spending it all on paid ads. There does need to be a balance. I would say rule of thumb, at least for me, businesses should be making about a 20% net margin or, or better on average. Um, if you're higher than that, that's great. If you're lower than that, then that can be fine. And I'd say generally, if your margins are better than that, you probably should be spending more money on paid ads and things like that, you're probably missing out on growth and you're probably under-investing in your business. So spend more on marketing, spend more on launching new products, spend more on paid ads, whatever it might be. Scenario really quick. So say I want to sell my business in the next five years for $7 million. Can you, does your firm take a look at someone's business and see the patterns and the growth and let you know, set yourself up for say in, in three years, I want to sell my business for amount about this much and give you kind of a strategy to kind of up your sales or do those sort of things. Is that part of what you guys do? Or do you only do like the buying and selling? Um, to some extent. So we, we always encourage people to reach out as early in your business as possible. So I say, once you get that two year mark, reach out. We offer valuations for free, so there's no charge to reach out. Um, we will tell you where you are now. And then most people then use that as an opportunity to establish where they want to get to. So they, we might say, hey, look, your business is worth a million dollars. And you say, I want to get to seven. And then we'll have a conversation with you about what you need to do to get to that higher level. Um, but we don't necessarily give you exactly what you need to be doing. We'll just give you the numbers you need to reach. or like potentially what you need to think about, what you need to consider, what other similar businesses um, are doing at that level as well. We might say, hey, look, you only have three SKUs. You should have 20 SKUs. So there's not, again, there's not a right or wrong answer, but yes, we do. We will speak to you. We'll figure out where you are now and where you need to get to. How have you found, like maybe in the past like six months or a, a growing trends for like, what is really appealing to the particularly those who are acquiring Amazon FBA businesses? What is particularly appealing right now in the e-commerce space for businesses? What are the ones that are selling for the highest rates? And, and what, are, what are people really, the buyers really looking to invest in? What are they looking for as, as a strong, solid FBA business? Yeah, so I'll say it, at a high level in the last two years, a huge amount of money has been raised to buy Amazon FBA businesses. We have literally billions of dollars of buyer demands in our network looking to buy businesses. So almost any business making over, say, a million dollars in sales is probably going to be popular at the moment. What you had to do five years ago to stand out, if we did this interview five years ago, it would have given a completely different answer. Now, honestly, it's, are you making sales? Are you profitable? Again, do you have a product which is either unique or packaged in a unique way? Um, do you have like favorable economics? Like, can you buy traffic on, are you buying Amazon ads and your return on ad spend is a reasonable amount? Um, do you have a team in place? If you don't have a team, do you at least have some systems to make sure that the business can operate without you? Um, we saw a business recently, which was quite hard to sell. And that was because the owner, I can't remember what kind of products he was making, but he was physically making them himself like in his house and they were quite complex and specialized. Um, and that was a difficult one to sell because in the mind of a buyer it's like, well, we don't know anything about this industry. We don't know how to make this product. If it's in a factory or like a warehouse or, or whatever that can work. 
that can work fine. Um, but I'd say if you are, if you do have a unique product, if it does have to be a little bit of a balancing act as to how it's made, that does not mean you cannot physically make your product yourself, but you need to at least have a process or a system someone can come in and, and follow. Um, other than that, like I said, there's a huge amount of demand out there at the moment for Amazon FBA businesses. There's probably, there's never been a better time in, in history to launch an FBA business. There's so much demand out there. Um, see, with the pandemic last year, a huge influx of new members of like prime members on Amazon. People are now ordering on Amazon for the first time ever. Um, so if you do have a business in the space, I think it's like absolutely the best time to have one. Um, so there's loads of small things you can be doing, but ultimately if you're making money, you're growing, or even if you're not growing that much, it's probably still sellable, profitable. You have a product which like looks good, packaged well, um, and you at least have a process for a buyer to take over your business. So if you're making- Oh, you're talking like your standard operating procedures. Cause I know I talk to a lot of solo entrepreneurs who have started an Amazon business and they're just kind of working for themselves. And some of them have decided like after a year or so, maybe this isn't for them. And, you know, as long as they have some sort of growth numbers are doing well, but they maybe don't enjoy what they're doing and they just want to sell said business. Um, so they, so I'm just, I'm just clarifying for the listeners here, you guys, if you guys have a, even a small business, you've just decided I'm at retirement age and I, I just don't want to do this anymore. It's great. It's profitable, but I'm all done. Or I want to move on to something else. Or you're just like, I'm burned out and done. Your business does not have to be making seven figures to sell it. Your business has to be profitable. It has to have some profit in there and you have to have some pretty plain and simple procedures for someone who's going to take it over for them to follow so that they can keep the same growth that you have. So what's really important, I think now is as you're building your business for an exit plan that you have documented, whether by video, whether by by uh, PDF, whatever it is, documenting all the things that you do in the day to day, because if you were to leave, how would somebody else take your place? If you're going to sell your business, it's not just you hand it over, like you hand over the keys to the house that you sold and say, good luck with that. There's got to be some sort of transition period. So, um, you know, I think pre preparing for uh, an exit or preparing for a sale or something like that is creating some standard operating procedures, uh, even just like, what do you do day to day? Who do you order from? Getting all of your duckies in a row as far as uh, your vendors and your, your finances and everything else as planning for that. So say you wanna exit in six months, now is the time to get your books in order and start writing down the different um, procedures that you do so that when you present your business for a potential sale, um, that it's very appealing to someone who wants to acquire it because you have all of your duckies in a row. Yeah, I think that's a really good, a really good summary. Like write it down as soon as you can, make a video. There's not again, there's not a right or wrong way to do it. The video is fine, written is fine as well. Well, I, this has been super helpful. I know that there's a lot of people that think that because they've only been business a few years or even two or three or four or five years and their business is barely making six figures, but they're profitable. And, you know, I, I've talked to a lot of people lately that have, have been doing this a while and they're just kind of tired, but they say, oh, I don't really I don't really have a lot of revenue, so no one's going to be interested. That is actually not true at all. I talked to another gentleman a couple of days ago in a networking thing, and he said that he can't get FBA businesses fast enough in order to sell them um, because the, the, the brokers and buyers of businesses are buying up all the Amazon FBA stores. So anyone listening, no matter if you have a, a small store that you've started a few years ago or you're, you're almost to that seven, you know, seven figure mark or beyond that, if you are taking care of your business, running it like a business, have some procedures that you can at least pass on to someone else and start documenting that you have or are building a sellable asset. So um, Thomas, thank you so much for being here. Can you tell us a little bit more about how people can get in touch with you to get free uh, valuations if they want to? Yeah, sure. So if you head over to the feinternational.com website, we have firstly a huge amount of free content. If you're you don't want to reach out yet maybe you're maybe you're like really early stage you just want to learn a few more of the basics go onto our blog we have a huge amount of content for people early stage if you want evaluation should be quite self-expansive when you go on the website you can click 
sell a website, navigate to the section where you request evaluation. Um, if you mention in the comment section you heard me on the podcast, then I'm not necessarily saying you will get better treatment, but someone will probably get back to you quite quickly. Um, reach out, always happy to have a chat. Um, if you maybe want to buy a business or you're thinking of maybe accelerating your growth by buying something, you can always do that. Again, tell the team you spoke to me or heard from me. Um, follow the team on social media. We're on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, whatever you like you like best. But I think ultimately, don't feel bad reaching out, whatever stage you're at. Like we speak to people. We, we sold a business for a client um, about three months ago for about $5 million. We very first met him in 2011. So it took him 10 years to build his business. Um, we spoke to him all, all the way through that time. There was never any like pressure. Like I said, we don't charge anything. We like helping people. So feel free to reach out or just like read our free content. There's tons out there. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. You've been a wealth of information. I appreciate all that you've shared there. And you guys, again, that's feinternational.com. They can reach out you yep. there. And then um, the blog is a wealth of information. Even if you're just getting started, there's little things you can do over time to just ensure that when you're ready, to exit or sell or pass it on, whatever it is, whether it's merging, all kinds of different options for exiting your business that you will be ready to go. I can't stress enough how important this is. This is almost like if you're selling your house, you know, you have someone come over and tell you, you should probably paint these neutral walls, fix this up, change this a little bit. You'll get a little bit more for your house. It's the same for your business. And so having someone like Thomas and his team, at least give it an evaluation of where you're at right now. Maybe you have no idea where you're at right now. Maybe your business is worth a lot more than you thought. And if you're really ready to move on to something else or retire, whatever, uh, now might be the time. So it's feinternational.com. You can reach out to them there, all their free content. And again, Thomas, thank you so much for being here. Guys, I know you could be anywhere else listening to any other thing. I don't take that for granted. Thank you for being a podcast listener at the Amazon Files. And don't forget to um, join the workshop. The last This is the last opportunity for you guys to get seats to the workshop, mommyincome.com slash workshop. Again, don't forget the Facebook group. Exit plan is your keyword, your code word to get into the Facebook group. Thank you guys so much and have a wonderful day.